36-year-old Tara McDonald has dealt with migraine headaches for years, but one day the headache was worse than anything she had ever experienced. I realized that it felt different than a migraine would have. The pain when it started was more of a piercing, really localized spot versus a migraine that would have been more generalized in just kind of an overall area. It wasn't a migraine. Tara had a brain aneurysm. It had ruptured and was bleeding into her brain. So when I came back into the emergency room, you know, they told me that uh, this patient had just been intubated. And so she was chemically paralyzed when I saw her. But before she was intubated, she was in a deep coma, essentially. So I called the operating room and said, we have a patient with a ruptured aneurysm and a large intracerebral hemorrhage and increased intracranial pressure needs to come back for emergency decompressive craniectomy. And anything that's bright inside the brain is, is bleeding. And you can see here this massive brain hemorrhage which is taking up the entire right frontal lobe. And the concerning thing about this is that it's pushing the brain structures off to the left. And it's also compressing the brain structures in the brain stem which is the most important part of the brain. And so we took her back immediately. The, the anesthesiologist was right there and there was absolutely no delay whatsoever took her back and, and removed the bone flap and did a bifrontal craniectomy and then went transcortical into the brain tissue where the hematoma was and evacuated the hematoma in its entirety. Decided not to repair the aneurysm right then and there because the anatomy was quite distorted and there was still a significant amount of swelling in that region. So we left the bone flap off and, uh, and took her back to the ICU and got her stabilized there. We like to get aneurysms, ruptured aneurysms, repaired within 24 to 36 hours. So that wasn't really the goal of the surgery. Um, but I decided the following day, following morning, when she was more stable and it started coming out of her coma, well, let's get the aneurysm repaired at this point. And instead of taking her back to the operating room, we used the newer technique, the less invasive technique, um, endovascular treatment, coil embolization to repair her aneurysm. My thought was that She's still very sick. She's still in a coma. I don't want to put her through the trauma of another surgery. The less invasive treatment is transfemoral, and it took us an hour to coil the aneurysm. And uh, and she walked, you know, basically left the cath lab with a tiny little puncture wound at the top of the right leg. It's a beautiful procedure. Uh, it's minimally invasive, especially for sicker patients. You know, I think it's the right thing to do. For the coiling, we go in through this plastic tube in the artery in the neck and snake a even smaller tube into the aneurysm here, past these loops in the artery, and then seal that aneurysm with platinum coils. And that's what you see here is you see all the normal bran branches are open, but the aneurysm has been completely sealed and is no longer present. I would say that you know, one of the most rapidly developing fields at this point is neurocritical care as a subspecialty. And I think what even neurosurgeons have recognized is that we can't do it all. You know, these are the sickest patients in the hospital. So what that means is we need subspecialized ICU care. And neurocritical care is one of the most rapidly growing fields for that reason, because these patients have just a litany of problems after um, subarachnoid hemorrhage. And it's important to have subspecialists that can address each one of those issues. And they're very unique. So. Uh, pulmonologists and your typical critical care doctor may not know the nuances of management of subarachnoid hemorrhage patients. Yeah, I think an important takeaway from her case is that she was having headaches for several days beforehand and some of them were severe headaches and a significant proportion of these aneurysm patients that have subarachnoid hemorrhage have what we call a sentinel bleed where a few days or a few weeks before their major hemorrhage they have a sudden onset of a headache and it's typically a bad headache one of the worst headaches that they've had and it may be accompanied by nausea and vomiting um, but they the symptom either gets ignored or you know headache is such a common complaint that people don't think of an aneurysm pretty much almost on a daily basis i count my blessings it's just amazing to me that i'm still able to be here and to be the mother to my son and the wife to my husband and I get to still live this life. I just am so blessed that I still get to be able to be a part of all of that.